Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of The Shredding Skeptic. Today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Heroes and Generals, and we're going to discuss whether or not the freemium model that we've seen on mobile recently is really all that suitable for PC. I think the jury's still out on this one, as this game is pretty fun to play for a couple of hours, but once you've started to really sink in the grind, you start to see where the money is made. So square yourselves away, dig your foxholes, and let's dive right in, shall we? So, we have three different factions that we can choose from here. We can play as the Allies, the Axis Powers, or as the Soviets. So we're going to try uh, to take a look at the three different options that uh, that'll give you on the triple stream that we're running here today. So the uh, mechanics between the rifles seem to be largely the same. Right off the bat, this freemium game is going to give you access to uh, a semi-automatic rifle uh, that pretty much everybody else is running on the battlefield. And as you uh, progress, or pay for upgrades, you can get yourself uh, either an automatic rifle or a submachine gun or something else. And But in a similar vein to running with rifles, if you want to just stick with the basic rifle that you uh, come equipped with, you could probably play this game for a couple of hours and and probably still get a pretty decent gaming experience considering it costs nothing more than about one and a half gigs of your hard drive space. So this brings us to the question of today's episode. Does the freemium model that we saw in the mobile market recently become such a huge hit, uh, is that a suitable platform for high-def PC games? Many in the recent Steam comments seem to say that it doesn't, because this game apparently has taken the freemium model a little bit too far in the amount of time that you have to grind out to actually level up and get accessories for your weapons. I mean, you gotta be putting in about five, six hours really before you're going to be able to start getting any upgrades, and for a lot of people that's just a little bit too much time, considering uh, there is that tantalizing option of just paying for gold and uh, using those gold coins to get better, uh, better upgrades for your weapons. Now this isn't the first time I've heard this argument being made. I remember when uh, Dead Space 2 came out with its in-game store, a lot of people said that it kind of broke the experience because if you wanted to just pay real money, you could get some really seriously unbalanced weapons and basically just have a very easy time of it if you really want to just pay to win. On the flip side of this argument, we have people saying, well, it's like, you know, the same as pre-ordering or DLC or anything like that. If you don't want to buy it, you really don't have to participate. And in this case, I haven't had a chance to really experience what a lot of those weapon upgrades are going to offer you above and beyond what uh, is here already. But I think uh, another argument that could be made here is that if you say you prefer to play as one particular style and not as another, instead of paying, you know, 30 to $60 for a game, perhaps you've only invested 10 to $15 in this game only by the specific equipment that you want to play as, uh, or play with, sorry. So what do you guys think? What, uh, what do you think would be a good solution for you? What you're likely to experience if you wanted to hop in on a game of heroes and generals is uh, a variety of player skills. As you can see, the uh, guy on our center screen was having a bit of trouble navigating around that tree. But uh, again, sometimes you have uh, drivers that are able to uh, drive and shoot uh, just fine. So, uh, again, it really depends on the kind of people you're playing with, and at the end of each match, it does give you the ability to rank the, uh, the particular battle, and I'm not really sure how that's going to affect how you get placed l later on. I'm not sure if that has a, a you know, balancing issue, maybe that, you know, you guys get completely smoked because there was just far too many uh, experienced players on the other team, or, or something of that nature. I'm not really sure how that works, but uh, I'm hoping over time that's going to be able to allow you to refine your gaming experience to uh, just make it more enjoyable overall. So if you guys have uh, one and a half gigs of hard drive space to spare and uh, just the time for download, this game is free and it'd be awesome if you guys want to hop in and we could do a little bit of uh, a battle because it seems that if you are able to coordinate your efforts in this domination style gameplay, you're probably going to be more effective against your enemy than, uh, you know, just kind of randomly <laughs> running around uh, shooting. It's definitely best to try to capture these uh, capture points as quickly as possible because the other team can rack up points quite quickly. A good strategy that seemed to work on some of my more victorious rounds were really just trying to work on keeping two capture points. If you allow your enemy to just keep that third one and maybe occasionally run some raids back there just to keep them on their toes, you're probably likely to just run out the clock on them. 
shooting mechanics I would say pretty similar to uh, most shooters that you may have played. However, this game seems to be a little bit less forgiving. There uh, do appear to be active bullet ballistics, and uh, especially when it comes to leading your shots ahead of a moving target. Uh, as well, there's no kind of uh, auto-aim, there's no kind of sticky uh, cursor grab or anything like that when you move over an enemy. It's all uh, just one-to-one, -one, so you'll find the shooting maybe a little bit slower paced than you'd find in uh, maybe a Battlefield or a Call of Duty. But, and again, that does feel a little bit refreshing as well, where, uh, you know, you have a limited magazine capacity, uh, and you have iron sights, and it does kind of level the playing field in that sense, where you don't have people just uh, running around quick scoping and prone diving and all that kind of stuff you might see in the uh, other kind of first-person shooter arenas. You also have a very limited stamina bar, so if you're going to be sprinting from point A to point B, you want to make sure that that thing's full before you get on the move, because if you're not moving, well, motionless operators ventilate easily. I found the recent upgrade to the Corsair M65 RGB gaming mouse uh, helped me out quite a lot in this game in particular with the addition of the sniper button on the thumb, which will drop the DPI of your mouse down to about 400 so that you have much more uh, area on that mouse pad to fine tune your shot, uh, and it does help especially when the targets are on the move. While playing this game, I couldn't help but think back to uh, BC from Alloy7's video regarding the uh, gaming palette cleansers. Now, I've been playing a lot of uh, survival games recently and a lot of just single-player stuff, so it was refreshing to hop back into the arena with some real people and get on the battlefield and uh, see what people are made of. So if you guys haven't had a chance to hop over and subscribe to Alloy7, I definitely recommend you do so. We have uh, another video coming up later in the summer where we discuss gaming value per hour. BC has been kind enough to host me on Gamer Life once again. And these freemium games do add uh, a bit of an interesting monkey wrench into the mix. Because now it becomes very difficult to complain about what uh, any of those little upgrades might happen to cost. For example, if you wanted a specific weapon, you would have to go out and uh, either spend hours and hours and hours, maybe even days, leveling up the normal way, which is uh, considerably more excessive in a freemium game than a normal one, or you could just buy it straight up. What seems to get people really upset, though, is if you're able to buy weapons that seriously unbalance the game. I also had this concern with running with rifles once you were able to level up and get some of the uh, more exclusive weapons. However, what I found it really offered was just a different style of play, rather than just an all-out way of dominating the opposition. Because let's face it, if you can just buy your way out of the challenge of the game, the game sort of loses a bit of purpose. Am I right? So what do you guys think? Is freemium the new way of PC games perhaps allowing players to build a gaming experience that's tailored more to their liking? Is this going to be something of a disaster for PC games by introducing a kind of class warfare? Or does the future of freemium gaming in the PC market lie somewhere in between these rather extreme positions? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Are there any PC games or any other system out there that perhaps you've played on where the game is so overloaded with features that you don't want, you almost wish you could have paid a lower price for it and maybe left out some of those features? For example, I just had a chance to take a look at BC's video on Sleeping Dogs, so BC, here's a question for you. Would Sleeping Dogs have been a better game if perhaps some of those chase scenes and fetch quests were paid downloadable content? And of course, for the sake of argument, you paid substantially less for the game. So I guess what this rather clean and simple World War II shooter has led me to question is whether or not there really is a place in the PC gaming market for somewhat generic concepts to simply be an a la carte pay system for the gamer. So before I get on too much of a tangent uh, regarding this rather unusual future that lies out ahead of us, thank you for taking the time to tune into this episode of The Shredding Skeptic. So, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see a little bit more of the iFinity perspective, three times more game, three times faster. And for all those in the Gamer Life community, I implore you, please submit your own videos about your gaming experience, because remember, these are our games, this is our story.